Welcome to the library of video support for using the Jones and Bartlett Learning Cloud Labs. In this video, we will provide an overview of lab operations. The user interface you see here is used in all the Jones and Bartlett Learning Cloud Labs. Let's get started. What you see here is the launch portal for our labs. I've already started up one of the labs, so we're going to hop over to that tab. Here is the VM environment for our labs. The gray box on the right is the virtual machine that we're using. The menu bar across the top in blue is there. And there is a lab guide over on the left hand side. A lab guide can be resized, collapsed, and even popped out into another window. Simply close that and it will redock itself. So let's just get started and show you a few things about the lab. At the beginning of the lab, we have an introduction which provides exactly that information. A lab overview. A set of learning objectives for each lab. And the topology that is being used in that particular lab. In this particular case, we've got several virtual machines in play. Next up is tools and software. We use fully functional software that are uh, no time bombs, no crippled versions. It is fully functional software, the very same material that uh, students will use when they get out into the big bad world upon graduation. Central to our lab infrastructure is the use of virtual machines. By using virtual machines, we provide all of the software and all of the infrastructure and the configuration the student will need to be able to run the labs. All the student needs is a browser and an internet connection. That way you nor the student need to worry about network configuration and installation of anything. All you need is a browser and an internet connection. After the tools and software, we have the deliverables and that, of course, is going to change from lab to lab. Let's talk about how the student works their way on down through the labs. We're going to actually going to fast forward to section two, part two, where we have an instructions about what the student is going to do, some notes about what's going on. We give the student instructions about how they're supposed to work their way through the lab and directions on how things work. We're not going to bother showing you all of that. We're going to presume that you understand how that may work. As the student makes their way on down through the lab, they will come to a step such as this one and step seven, make a screen capture. We'll presume that we've done the prior six steps in this lab, and we're going to click on that camera to take a screenshot. That captures the state of the virtual machine over there on the right. It automatically drops the screenshot into the lab report that we assemble for the student, and it marks that task as green. Visiting that screenshot is worth doing. We're going to click on that camera to review the screenshot. You will see that there is the name of the lab, the virtual machine that's being used, date and timestamp, and the student's name. The student can also add an additional comment in this dialog box here. If the student doesn't like the screenshot, they can delete it, which I'm going to do here. They're asked for a prompt. When that occurs, the task turns back to red and the lab guide percentage rolls backwards. All the student needs to do is click the camera to take the screenshot. By following this approach, all the student needs to do is follow the instructions think about what they're doing, take screenshots at appropriate times, and we take care of assembling the lab report for the student. At the beginning of the labs, we are very prescriptive about what we have the student do. We use a lot of red boxes and pointers to make sure that the student doesn't get lost and they can find their way through the process quite, quite reasonably. Later on in the lab, we will not provide quite as much direction, and instead the language will change to run, launch, or execute, or similar type terms. Toward the end of the lab, we also have some challenge and analysis questions. Those things can be research 
or write a uh, memo to your boss about this topic. And in that case, as we have here, we have a text-based field. All the student needs to do is click on the text and enter their response. And I'll just enter some placeholder content and hit save. Our labs are built so that the student can leave the lab and pick up where they left off. You click on disconnect, you will see that you are creating what's called a state save. That captures the labs in their entirety and allows the student to pick up where they left off the prior time when they left. I'm not gonna actually do that here in this case. The use of state saves also allows us to reset the lab completely. Sometimes a student will get themselves into uh, hot water and the best approach is to reset the lab to its original state and start all over again. They can do this on their own from this menu bar. Also from that menu bar is the technical support. We provide tier one 24 seven technical support. We make sure that the labs are up and running and are available all the time. I'm actually going to leave the virtual machine now and create a new state save, rolling back to our launch portal. As the student works their way on down through the lab, as I said, they create a lab report. That lab report is available here by clicking on view lab report. Here you see the lab report that has been built out with every screenshot dropped into place and in places there are, where there are no screenshots you will see placeholders where those screenshots are missing the student can also click on the text fields and provide more editing through this interface if they like when the all the work is done in the lab obviously that is done in the virtual machine environment, the student will output the lab as a PDF by downloading the lab report up here in the upper right-hand corner. That's the document that the student will deliver to the instructor. Usually an instructor will build an assignment within their LMS for the student to deliver that lab report. Then the instructor can grade the lab report within the LMS and the grade will appear in the gradebook in a, natural, in a natural form. We also provide a tutorial for students. This is definitely something that needs to be visited. We talk about state saves and capturing screenshots and editing those and the general operations of the lab. We also do a system checker which checks the browser and the network connection to make sure that those are up to speed. For instructors, there is a sample lab report. This is not available for students. This provides all the information that they need to be able to do side-by-side -side grading of lab reports. This is the, the answer key, if you will. Instructors are also able to see their student activity. By clicking on students and they can see the progress of the students as they make their way on through the lab. More analytics are also possible through in the analytics tab, which looks at the classroom level stuff. We provide measures of time on task, lab progress and completed sections. Pick a measurement, pick a lab, and you will see a bar graph of student activity. Lastly, under reports, the instructor can pull down a spreadsheet of lab sessions, again, seeing all of the lab starts and stops so that they can have that, and that can be the period of the time can be sculpted to fit their needs. Thanks for viewing this video. Other training videos are available in our library. Please feel free to browse the collection for other materials. Have a great day.